Okay, what we have here is all the reagents needed to make a compound called phenyl isonitrile. Now, why am I making this? Well, it smells a lot. And not good either. Okay, these are the reagents we'll need for this synthesis. This is a mixture which is in a 90-10 proportion of ethanol to water, which has 15 milliliters of chloroform or trichloromethane dissolved in it. This is the same type of 90-10 mixture of ethanol and water, but has 15 milliliters of aniline, or amino benzene, dissolved in it. And finally, a solution of sodium hydroxide in ethanol. Oh, we'll also need a portion of denatured alcohol, or ethanol, as well. So first, I'm going to add hmm, around 75 to 100 milliliters of ethanol to this flask right here. Okay, now we're going to need to measure out, it doesn't really matter what order you do it, but I'm going to do the aniline first. Slowly, don't want to splash. Okay. This goes into the flask. And I'm going to turn on the stirring to completely dissolve it. There we go. And now, using the same flask is okay, we're going to combine these anyway. I'm going to do the chloroform, or trichloromethane and ethanol water mixture. This will not start reacting until we add a base, which in this case I'm using sodium hydroxide. Um, and I wouldn't really call it a catalyst because it's not being regenerated, but it is sort of the initiator. Alright, chloroform's going in. And on second thought, I might have wanted to use a larger flask, but too late now. Alright, finally we're going to add the sodium hydroxide and ethanol mixture. Now this is going to kick off the reaction. It won't be, you know, vigorous or anything, but we do want to work quickly to minimize the odor. Let's see, about 75 milliliters of that. Now that, that solution of sodium hydroxide and ethanol is pretty strong. Uh, it's not dilute, but it did take a while to get all that sodium hydroxide to dissolve in this. So, we're going to add this, and then we're going to work quickly to stop it up or, sorry, cover it up, and start heating it. So, I'm going to add this now. Now, in a few portions, I'm going to add the sodium hydroxide and ethanol mixture using a syringe. Well, that seems just my luck. My syringe doesn't want to work. All right, plan B. We're just going to dump it in. Alright, we're ready to go now. So, that's going to start reacting, but very slowly. Um, we're going to have to heat it up to really get that reaction going and get it, the compound that we want, the phenyl um, to, you know, We want to start uh, to be able to smell it. <clears throat> so, before I do that, I'm going to use this. Some, my most high-tech equipment. Not really, it's just saran wrap, but... Um, I'm going to put it over the neck of the flask, or the mouth, just like that. And now using my syringe that doesn't want to work, I'm going to put a hole in it, sort of widen that. This is going to be for the thermometer. Now the thermometer is important because we don't want to have the reaction temperature be too low, otherwise we won't really get a reaction. It'll take months to, 
to complete. And we don't want it too high, otherwise, you know, I'll stink myself out and, you know, it's going to be a bad day. Um, so, what I'm going to do, this is the thermometer, it's a little dirty, it's old, but it still works. Like so. And now what we want to do is use this. This is a heat gun. Okay, that's much better. So as you can see now, it is tightly clung to the mouth. Nothing's going to get out. That's going to smell bad. Well, I hope. Now what we're going to have to do is increase the temperature to get this reaction going. And after I do that, I'm going to let it go for a little while, and then I'm going to explain exactly what's happening in this reaction. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to increase the temperature of the hot plate to, oh, I don't know, around 65, 70 degrees Celsius. 68 It's about good. We don't want the ethanol to boil because, you know, above that temperature it'll boil and we don't want that. Uh, but below that it's going to go too slow. So you got to find a good medium. Okay, now it's set. We can leave it to react, stir, and heat for about half an hour to 45 minutes. So, we've got three things. We've got aniline. I'm just going to draw that out. I'm not the best artist, please forgive me. That's aniline. There we go. And that is going to react with chloroform or trichloromethane, but not under these conditions. So we have to start that. And for that, we use sodium hydroxide. And we have to use three parts of that to react with one part of this and one part of this. So, under heat, these are all going to react to form phenyl isonitrile, which the structure looks like this. And that's, you know, opposite of the nitrile group, which is CN. Let's just put an R right there. And that makes it have a lot different of a property than normal nitriles do. See, isonitriles, they really don't have the toxicity that normal nitriles do. Nitriles like this, with the exception of things like cyclohexyl isonitrile, have no appreciable toxicity to humans, and that's very interesting because this stuff smells atrocious. There's, there's nothing that I can really compare it to, maybe diiodoacetylene, but, on the contrary, that is toxic, whereas this isn't. So, anyway, back to the reaction. This isn't the only thing that's formed. We're also forming... three... HCl. Now, if this weren't to, you know, combine with, or react with the phenyl isonitrile, we'd get something else, and that's not what we want. So, to preserve the isonitrile, we're going to have to get rid of that HCl. And that's where the sodium hydroxide comes in. So the sodium hydroxide will react with the HCl to form three molecules of water. Or not three molecules, but three parts of water. And three sodium chloride, which will dissolve. The sodium chloride nor the water will affect this reaction in any major way. So we now get a solution of phenyl isonitrile, water, and sodium chloride with possibly some excess sodium hydroxide in ethanol. And that's going to be really stinky. So I'll be right back. So this isn't the first time I've done this reaction. It's one of my favorites. Um, I've done it before, and I do have some product. So this is what it looks like after a few months. in my garage, on the shelf. Pretty boring, right? No. It's really gotten ripe over the months, and I'm gonna say it now. I had to, so much so I had to put a warning label on it as a malodorant, which means something that really smells bad. All right, so here you're gonna see, with the help of my trusty flashlight, on the edge of the flask, we've got little streaks 
may, may be able to see it now. But there are these little streaks, and that's just the liquid refluxing. So we're going to let this go for another, oh, I don't know, 25 minutes, half an hour, and we should be all good to go to see how it smells. Uh, alternatively, you can leave it on, but I have found that that's the best amount of time. So even though we know that something like, you know, like I said, phenyl isonitrile or phenyl isocyanide, whatever you want to call it, isn't toxic, it smells unbelievably bad. Whereas something like, here I have diodoacetylene, which is underwater, that is frozen a bit, but it's the white solid at the bottom. This also smells bad, not as bad as that, but it's uniquely bad. And that is because it is, it's thought to be very toxic. This does smell bad, and it's toxic. That is much more common than something like this, which isn't toxic, but smells, you know, so bad. And, you know, I know what some of you may be thinking. Oh, distill it. No. I'm not going to distill it. I never have, and I probably never will, because I'm really honestly afraid of what the pure stuff smells like. All right, now the moment of truth. Let's see how stinky it is. Oh, it's not going to be super powerful at first because that ethanol is very hot and it's really going to overpower you know anything else that's in there, but that's some pretty good stuff. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to let this cool for a few hours, okay, um, <laughs> and I'm going to add it to my other stock solution. So. Anyway, this was the synthesis of phenyl isocyanide or phenyl isonitrile. I really hope you enjoyed. You can subscribe if you want to, like if you want to, and thank you for watching.